My name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager of the Ion Diffraction Facility, which is a user facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. In this video, I will introduce the Regaku Crystal Lab Mini 2 Single Crystal Diffractometer. More specifically, I will show you some of the hardware that's inside and then how to mount and orient a single crystal. Before we begin though, let me point out this door lock button. When it is off, that means that the door is locked, but as soon as I press the button, it turns solid yellow, and then it begins blinking and making a beeping sound. When that happens, I am able to open up the door, and now we can take a look inside at some of the hardware. On the left-hand side, we have the x-ray tube. You can see here that it says shutter, so if this light is on, the shutter is closed, and we can safely work inside. If this light is on, then the shutter is open and x-rays are flooding through the system, which means we do not want to be working inside. We should never be able to see that light though, because in order for that to be turned on, the door would have to be closed and locked. This is the collimator, and this is where the x-rays come out. This is where your sample will sit. This right here goes to the beam stop, so that we don't shoot the x-rays directly into the detector. This right here is the nozzle for the nitrogen gas that allows us to cool our system down to 100 Kelvin. The inner part of the gas stream is nitrogen, and then there is an outer rim that is dried air. The dried air keeps moisture from getting to the nitrogen gas and then forming ice crystals on the sample. This back here sucks in all of the nitrogen gas as it is coming out so that it's not just shooting down all the way into the chamber. This is the detector, and we see that we have a window protector. We always want to make sure that this is installed while we are in here working with the sample. In order to remove it, just slide it straight back once you are ready to perform your measurement. If you need to insert it, it should glide nice and smoothly. I will leave that installed so that I can mount and align the crystal. Here is one of our sample holders. The crystal is right on the end. It's very tiny, so you are likely unable to see it on the video. I will hold it very firmly and then place it right on here. This is magnetic and it will really want to grab the sample holder and shift it into the correct position. Hold on to it, don't let it very quickly snap into place, otherwise your crystal might go flying into the chamber. With such a small crystal, you will definitely lose it. There we go. You see why we need the detector window here, because we are so close to it, we don't want to bump into it with our fingers. Now that that is installed, let's go over to the computer. If a previous measurement had been run, we can just click Start Stop, and then we can click Start New. If you need to turn up the x-rays, we see that they are currently 20 and 2. Those are the standby settings. We can come over here to x-ray, set KVMA, choose default, and OK. Then we see here that it should start ramping up. Ideally, you want to do this before you start trying to mount your sample on the sample holder. That way it gives the system enough time to warm up and reach equilibrium. I'm not going to worry about that today because this is just a demonstration. I see now that it is 50 and 12, which is what we want, so I will close that. In order to make sure that the sample is aligned in the x-ray beam, we can either click this mount button here or we can hit F12 on the keyboard. Our goal here is to center the sample in the crosshairs. It is way too high right now, so if I rotate this kind of ribbed piece here, then I should be able to drop that down. Now we see our crystal.
I next need to move it to the left. We have this little tool inside, which has a larger end and a smaller end. We are going to use the large end and use it to turn this little piece here. All you do is stick it right on there, which can be a little difficult sometimes, and then rotate it. That's pretty good. Not perfect, but I'm not going to worry about perfect quite yet. At this point, we see that we are in the down position. We can either click this button or hit the left button on the keyboard, which will rotate the sample 90 degrees. We then need to make sure that it is aligned in this orientation. So I will come back in here. We need to move the sample right this time. There we go. We also need to come down a little bit. That's looking pretty good. If I want to rotate again, I might go 180 degrees, which is arrow up on the keyboard. I think that's looking pretty good, so I'll next do the right to see what that looks like. And also pretty good. I will point out that if you have a smaller or larger crystal and you want this circle to be smaller or larger to help you center the crystal, you can come down here to the size button and enter some other number than two. These are in tenths of a millimeter, so if I enter three and click OK, that would make this circle bigger. It is now 3 tenths of a millimeter, or 300 microns. Two worked pretty well for this crystal, though. Once our crystal is well aligned, we can remove our window protector. I'll place it in the bottom down here, and then I'll take the little tool and place it right on top of that. One thing that you want to make sure of is that this is all the way up and touching the nozzle. It shouldn't ever move, but if it ever looks like this is tilted a little bit, then gently push it up until it is in contact with the cooling nozzle. At this point, we can go ahead and close the door and press the door lock button that is flashing, which is the one I showed you earlier. You can then move on to data collection, which I will cover in another video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.